Hi, it's Lynn Greason here from Lynn Greason Designs and uh, I'm here today to show you some tips and tricks for using uh, some of my new products that are at the lily pad. In this case I'm going to be showing you how I use my fade out albums and these are sets of templates which feature some blended style photos. So the photo spots that um, aren't framed and they're not sharp edged they actually blend or are into the background or are slightly erased basically they they fade out at the edges so these are these are just clipping masks you just use them like any other template you can just you know clip a photo to that shape and and call it done um, but there are some tips and fun things you can do that make them even more fun to work with so that's why I wanted to show you today so they there's two sets there's the fade outs and the fade out and torns and you get them various options you can buy them individually or you can buy the bundles or mega bundle so you'll see in the store what what your options are and I've actually used them a lot uh, this is a layout I just did the other week uh, which was for a um, challenge at get it scrapped about using contrast and titles so big and small titles and I used one of the fade out and torn templates for that and I actually had a lot of fun with that I, I used some street art from this French town that we were in here and here and I also went to Google Images and I found some historical photos of the town because it was a really fascinating town and I wanted to sort of uh, have these for my daughter to look at because I thought she'd find it quite fascinating to see what it was like in its heyday really before the railways became less sort of important than they are now and so I've, I've used the faded out photo spot for uh, this old photo here and I also added some brushes and transfers and I've used them quite a lot like I said uh, this is one from a few years ago uh, when my parents we went to a sculpture in the park exhibition so I used the photos here it was a really bright sunny day and I upped the saturation a bit so that they popped and I also did my favorite trick which is to have two uh, layers of the photo so two copies of the photo on top of each other and then to add a color overlay to the bottom one and then to slightly erase the top one just to reveal that it's a really fun technique and I'll be showing you how I do that and this here is actually a close-up photo of the sculpture um, from a different angle from that using one of the faded out photo spots there and in this one I just did completely different I just actually used the a big photo for the background um, of the page because the sunflowers were so amazing look at them they're like pom-poms um, ah, this is a uh, uh, another example where I've used it, in this case I used a desaturated, a, a black and white photo for the faded spot and I really, with a white background and I really like the sort of fresh feel of that, especially with this sort of nice font here. So that's one of my favourite pages. But the reason I actually initially designed them was because I have a whole lot of photos from when I went on my big OE which is what people from New Zealand do it stands for overseas experience and as soon as you get enough money you get out of New Zealand and you go and live in some on the on usually on the slow sofa or the floor of someone else's flat in London and then you do sort of temp jobs and you save up and you go traveling around Europe so the camera that I had was basically a uh, just a sort of cheap throwaway instant camera type thing so the photos are really really soft there's no detail in them at all so I wanted to have templates which meant that worked with that effect so the fading out they're soft already so I used them for these faded out photos rather than trying to use them as a big photo or you know sharply framed photo which I felt would just draw attention to the poor quality that they had this sort of I, I quite like the feel the softness that they actually have when you use them like this um, so this was this is in a ferry to the Greek iron so I used a photo for the background below the torn paper for that that's a photo taken from the ferry um, and this is the 
faded out spot in the middle where I've softly blended it in. This is uh, where we were living in London and I was thinking like a scrapbooker even then because I took a photo of the street sign and I used that for the, the background there. This is just another Paris one. Another trick um, that I was talking about before using the colour overlay I've done here again where again I've used a blue colour overlay onto the photo and then I've duplicated it taking the colour overlay off and just erased it so you get this sort of two colour effect where it sort of softly blends into this monochrome look and another trick I did often when I was doing this album was I would use one photo for the faded fade out spot, photo spot for the soft blended type photo spot and then I'd put another photo behind it so that the two sort of blended in together so I did it here and I did it here as well where this photo sort of blends into that photo and I did it here as well and I used a sort of a sharper transition between the two and this will give you an idea of how old I am because that is the Berlin Wall still standing uh, and one of the great things about traveling around uh, Europe is that when you go to museums or art galleries the entry tickets are often little works of art in themselves so I used that uh, here and uh, here I actually used a banknote this is me in Yugoslavia but when it was Yugoslavia there's Marshal Tito who was a communist ruler and I used the photo uh, the banknote there in one of the photo spots and again as well behind it sort of clipped to another mask there and here in Spain when we were surprised by snow I used a very soft pattern paper and I just gently erased a little bit more as well I think of the faded photo spot into it and here I just used that paper basically as the background of the page and here in Venice I just made the photo spot mask a really bright blue and then when I've clipped the photo to it I've erased a little bit more around the edges with a very soft brush. Oh, there's Yugoslav again. Car broke down but the, uh, the car yard had a monkey so that was fun but I didn't get rabies. Thank goodness. So uh, I'm just going to quickly now show you some of those tips and tricks in a little bit more detail using um, some more recent photos. So this is a layout that I've started using one of the fade out and torn templates and using my Oh My Dear kit which is just new in the lily pad. So I've used a pattern paper from that kit as the background, as the base of those, those are the ones I was playing with before. So you can see I've just dragged it onto there. I actually added a transfer here as well, a little stamp, and I've put this photo into that photo spot and another solid paper as well onto this that clipping mask area. So I need to put a photo for this spot here, and I like this more distant photo. So I'm just going to click that photo layer that mask layer so that it's active and then I'm going to drag on that photo and I'm just going to clip it down by hovering between the two holding down alt and clicking now that's just shut that down there you go so that's what I get immediately when I put it on but there's lots of things I can do here now the first thing I notice is that when you have a photo which has got some sort of really dark areas in it where it's on the soft edge of the blending type mask, it's not the prettiest of effects. So I could, if I wanted, grab my dodge tool which is over here and then use that to soften and lighten those areas which is one good trick. But actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look and see before I do anything else does it look nicer if I play around with it a bit? So what I'm going to do is, there you go, so move it a bit closer there. So immediately that looks much 
pretty there where you've got that soft edge where it's blending into the paper and also I've made it so that the line here of the path comes down and meets that corner there so it's a really nice look it's a bit dull so I'm just going to go here to image adjustments brightness contrast and just tweak it a bit there okay so I might be happy with that I might think yes I like the look of that and leave it like that or I might decide that I could command J V might want to put that transfer put it coming up peeking behind it like that that's something I might want to do what is always a good thing to do is to play around with your blending modes because after all you're going for a blended effect so I can either I can see what happens if I put, let's have a look on overlay and that's really soft and there I've just put the photo layer onto overlay blend mode over that maybe like that put it back to normal or you can go layer merge down now it's completely taken the shape of that clipping mask so I've got a photo which is that shape and then I can see what happens I could do multiply and then up the brightness again and that really blends it in to the to the background and then I could try like just darkening up the edges or maybe brightening lightening the edges even more if I want so that's one thing I can do um, and I could just before you just side multiply the way to go just try around some other ones maybe you like that look but you've lost too much detail so another trick you can do that's on color burn mode duplicate that layer okay that's on double color burn mode or you could try putting it on overlay or you could actually try putting it on normal again lowering the opacity of that one a bit and then just gently erasing so it's mostly on on the uh, color burn mode so there's all sorts of tips and tricks and things you can do to um, just take it up to the next level so I'd certainly urge you to, to do that not to just drag the photo on clip it and call it done to, to play around with the brightness and contrast of the photo always with a blended photo I nearly always up the brightness and contrast and then to try to actually um, merge it down with the clipping mask and then try to blend it into your background paper and see what effects you can get so that's sort of the basic uh, approach now the other th trick you can do is what I've done here so I have actually I've clipped that photo down to the photo mask and then I put a color overlay on it I've just gone FX color overlay and I've picked if you can see um, I actually all I did was I got my color picker and I picked the color for my hat and I tried it on that and I thought wow I like the look of that so you might actually like that look maybe you want to see what it's like on blue maybe you like that look or maybe you want to take some of the sort of yellowish tones from this transfer or go for a desaturated look like that but I actually liked that orangey look but I wanted to still have the actual color of the photo as well so I duplicated that layer I took the color overlay off and then I used a really soft brush I think probably just a ordinary soft edge brush and I just erased that top layer there to reveal the color overlay layer beneath so that's and I really like that I was quite pleased with that so that's what one option I could go here's another option I actually clipped the pattern paper to that masking shape then I clipped the photo to it and used some different brushes I think I used from see what I've got up here yes I just used a a um, watercolory brush in fact just a couple of these paint brushes which I think are from my um, mess with paint set 
and I use them to partially erase that photo which I put on hard light so I'll show you what it's on normal so what's what I did I simply you can see better there I simply used that brush to erase bits of that photo to reveal this pattern paper clipping mask and then I put it on hard light mode but again I've lost too much of the detail of her and I didn't I wasn't happy about that so I duplicated that layer I put it back onto normal and then I just used soft brush to reveal some of this hard light layer beneath so you've got a layer which is your mask layer which has got pattern paper on then you've clipped your photo to that and put it onto a different blending mode in this case hard light and then you've duplicated that layer again put it back onto normal and just softly erase so that's quite a fun effect actually I'll just okay okay <laughs> I'll just minimize that in case I decide I want to keep playing with it uh, what else have I got here I think that was the other one I was doing and here's another fun one where I've done I've clipped my photo to the layer mask and then I dragged on this paper which is also from the same oh my dear kit which is like a bocker paper and I've dragged that on and I put it on an overlay mode and then moved it so that her face was beneath one of the spots on the paper I'll just show you what the paper looks like when it's normal so that's the that's the pattern paper and I just clip that as well and then put it on overlay so that's another really fun effect you could do and you might decide that actually that's too dark at the edges so I'm just going to use my dodge tool just to soften that up like that there you go so there's all sorts of fun you can have with these so I, I so don't just drag your your photo on clip it and go oh it looks a bit dull so you know just have some fun tweak it up the brightness go to image adjustments brightness can contrast to make it pop that bit more and then have a play with either dragging on some papers and clipping them to it or putting a color overlay on by going fx color overlay oh there you go look at that see so I could actually try how about a blue mm, how about there you go that's an interesting effect as well so that's just by putting on this very dark greeny grey colour overlay onto that it's a fun effect so just have fun just play and you just never know what you might actually end up with thanks a lot bye